saving the software is only part of the story. We have to save the software so we can save the works that were created using no software. Personally, I've been working on the history of um, data and trying to save the history of information for going on 15, 16 years. However, we only got this wonderful computer archaeology lab when we opened here at Tonsley. So I was able to actually, you know, um, start putting into place the um, legacy hardware and access the software and the data files. And so we've got fantastic digital art that was created in the um, 1980s and without the original software we can no longer enjoy the artwork. We have books written that without the original program that created those works we can't access them. That's why we've called this computer archaeology because it's not just a matter of say saving backups for something, it's about the interpretation of it, the meaning of it, putting it in context. I'm pleasantly surprised at how many um, of our undergraduates are incredibly interested in this research. Just as you've got people interested in mainstream archaeology, they like looking at old stuff and interpreting it, and so there are people um, who are coming through who want to know our heritage our digital heritage. Old computer games are one of the main ways in which people came to get familiar with digital computers. So in the 1980s um, and late 1970s, nobody had really had a chance to get hands on with computers. And then microcomputers came along and they were cheap enough and small enough and simple enough that people could actually have them in their homes. And one of the major uses of early microcomputers was to play computer games and indeed to write computer games. Well, in Australia generally, we've been looking at the history of computer games uh, and the software that's been written for microcomputers in the 80s. Um, and there were both um, commercial operations and hobbyist operations. Some people certainly did become famous from writing their own software. Schoolboy really um, written game uh, that didn't get published at the time uh, but that we have uh, unearthed and got working again in collaboration with some um, software preservationists in the community um, was Matthew Hall's uh, game called The Jewels of Sankara Island and Matthew Hall has now gone on to um, make you know, six-figure sums very recently with a game um, that's been released on mobile platforms called Crossy Road. I think one of the real challenges in this area is that uh, now digitality is so much a part of our everyday lives. You know, we carry little computers essentially around in our pockets. And so having some contact or some memory, um, some history of what it was like when computers first came along is really significant.